It's important to write tests for all the code you write, especially when you're learning. Why? Because tests reduce bugs and new features and reduce regressions in your existing code base as you add new features. Flask comes equipped with a test client which allows our tests to mimic actual client requests. So requests hit our routes which are handled by the views as they normally would, then the response is sent back to the actual test. In general, you want to write tests to check the response for correctness. So make sure your virtual environment is activated and then open up your code editor and let's get to it. So let's start by creating a new file called test.py in the main directory. Test.py and then on the repository I have a boilerplate that we can use. So test boilerplates and we can grab the, go ahead and copy and paste this in. Save that. So again, the test client is what we use to create a test, mocking out the functionality of our current app. And you can think of it as an isolated app that we can use to send requests to and then test the responses all outside the scope of our main app. And we're using the, te the unit test library to call the login route and then we're checking the response status code and ensuring that it equals 200. So with that saved, let's go ahead and open up our terminal and then run the test. And it passed. So we need to write tests to cover our, our entire app. And each test should test only one piece of functionality. Stop for a minute and from an end user perspective, think about how our app works. The best way to do that is to actually go through our app as an end user, then determining each individual feature and then writing a test for it. So let's fire up the server. And then let's go ahead and navigate to our login routes. So like I said, the best way to do this is just to go through your app, manually testing it, and then think about how you can test each piece of individual functionality. In most cases, we'll either test the response status code or that the actual data return contains text from the page. For example, in the case of this login route, we could test to ensure that the text, please log in, is part of the response. And so let's go ahead and add that to our test. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And change the comment here. So ensure that login page loads correctly. Uh, let's change the function name. So test login page loads. So we're creating the test client, and then we call the login route, and then we want to ensure that the text please log in is part of the response. So let's actually change the assert down here. Let's change this to assert true, and let's put please log in. And we want to make sure that's in the response response.data okay so let's go ahead and test that again cool it passes so going back to sublime here why do you think it's important to test the actual data rather than just say a 200 response well, if you think about it, we don't know anything about the data returned if we just test for a 200 status code. It could be JSON, or for all we know, it could be an entirely different page because we rendered the wrong template. So if we test for the actual text from the template, then we know that the right template was rendered. So going back to our app here, if 
fire back up the server. What else can we test on this page? So I'll just write these out real quick. So we can well, we can ensure that the login behaves correctly with the correct credentials. So let me just write that out. So ensure login behaves correctly given the correct credentials. And then of course we can ensure that login behaves correctly given the incorrect credentials. And then we also want to ensure that the logout behaves correctly. So this will be three different tests, of course. And before we write out these tests, let's actually jump into the shell to figure out how to mock out these requests. We go to enter I Python. So let's start by importing our app. So from app imports. Now we want to create our test client and assign it to that variable tester. So app dot test underscore client. So now we need to do a post request to that login route and pass in a username and password. So let me just write that out. So we're going to set that to variable response. So there's our request there, the HTTP verb or method. And so we want to hit the login route. Our data is going to be a dictionary, the username, admin, and then the password is also going to be admin. So then we should follow the redirects since we need to test the page we're redirected to upon successful login, which is the main page. We can do that by just saying follow redirects, set that equal to true. Okay, so we should get a 200 response here. Cool, so now we can write our test to ensure that the text to that specific page is found within the response. And how do we find out what text that is? Let's just go ahead and log in. So exit out of IPython. So what do we want to test here? We could test welcome flask, click here to log out. How about we test for the you are just logged in and ensure that's part of the response. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this here. Save some time, and let's go ahead and write out the test. So let's name the function test correct login, and then we're creating our test client, and then I can put in the response here. Let me go ahead and format this so it's just a little bit more readable. And I'm going to actually change this to assert in and then comma response data. And then so the text was let's see, you were logged in. Cool. So if we test that out, if we actually run our tests, so we have a failure here. Let's see actually which test failed. Test correct login, of course, the one we just wrote. And so it says you were logged in is not part of the response and the text is actually you were just logged in so I forgot to put the word just so now if I test that it passes so let's see what the next test is going to be so ensure login behaves correctly given the incorrect credentials 
And this is going to be a very similar test. But what are we going to be testing for exactly? So let's go ahead and log out. And I need to fire up the server. So let's test to ensure that invalid credentials, please try again as part of the response. I'll go ahead and copy and paste this. And I'm going to copy this just to save some time. Change the function name to test incorrect login. This is going to go in place of this here. So we're testing the right string. And then all we need to do here is just change admin to something other than admin. So let's test that out. And that passed. So we can move on. So what's the last test we want to do? Ensure logout behaves correctly. So let's see what we actually need to test. And let's fire up the server. Let's go ahead and log in correctly. And then when you log out, we want to make sure that you are just logged out is in the response. So let me go ahead and grab this test here and paste it. So we want to test log out. Again, I want to create this test client. So first we need to actually log in. So we need to log in and we're testing a different response. So response equals tester.get. We're testing the logout route. And we want to follow redirects. So we'll set that equal to true. And so we are testing that the string you were just logged out as part of the response. So let's go ahead and test this. Kill the server. Cool, I'll pass. And let me fire this back up. So let's go back to Sublime real quick and let me make this full screen here. So if we look at our last three tests, these here, they have a bad code smell, meaning there are problems with them. First, there's redundancy in the actual code, and we can abstract some of that out using helper functions to dry out our codes so that we are not repeating code, but that's just a start. There's a few more issues, but they are a bit esoteric so I won't go over them at this point. So right now, since these tests work, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them the way they are, but we will be refactoring this in a future video. So let's go ahead and move on for now. So back to the browser, what else do we need to test? How about we ensure that the main page requires a login? So let me just write the comment for that. Ensure that the main page requires login. And then let's see what we need to do. Test exactly, so we are logged out. So then if we try and hit that main page, that main route, let's test for this string. We need to log in first. And I can grab this test here. That's the most similar to what we are going to be actually testing. So let me just change the name of the function to test main route requires login. So we're going to create our test client. So if we do tester.get. And if we hit that main route, but don't follow redirects, then we can really only assert that the response status code 
is going to be a 302, so we actually do need to follow the redirects. So it redirects us back to this login page. So I'll set this to true. And then we want to assert we need to log in first. Is in the response. So before we test this out, I've kind of gone quickly through how to write these functions. One thing that I missed is that this test needs to be part, I'm sorry, the word test needs to be the first part of every single function or else unit test will actually not pick it up. So if I remove this and then we try and run the test, it's not going to find this test. And I will just show you. So this tested only four, five tests, and there's actually six tests there. And you can see that the test main route requires login isn't there. So we actually need to have this here. So now if we run the test, you can see that there's six tests, they all pass, and there is the test that we just wrote. Okay, so go, going back to our tests, so the last one we wrote was to ensure that the main page requires login. So a similar test would be a test that the logout page requires a user to be logged in. And I'll let you write that test since it's so similar to the last test. And you can check the repo for the answer. Okay, so what else do we need to test? Fire back up the server. So what else do we need to test? So we've tested logging in and logging out. We've also tested logging in with incorrect credentials. We've tested that we could hit the login endpoints. Let's actually log in and see if there's anything else on that main page that we should test. Well, we actually have not tested that posts appear on the main page. And that's obviously an important part of what our app does. It displays the posts from the database. Let's write a test that does just that, test to make sure that posts show up on the main page. So ensure, ensure that posts show up on the main page. And I will go ahead and grab this test here. Paste that. Okay, so let's change the function name so Pepe doesn't scream at us. Test post show up. Just call it that. So we create our test client. We log in. So now what do we need to assert? How about we just assert that hello from the shell shows up within the response? And let me go ahead and run our tests. Cool, all seven pass. So one thing to be aware of here is that we are not using a test database for our tests. This is a big no-no. You never ever want to mix test data with real data. So you want to actually create a new test data base for each test. However, since we're not writing to the database, we can get away with it for now. But I will show you how to resolve this in a future video. So likewise, notice how the test is testing whether a specific post is in the database. What happens if that data is removed? This test will fail, of course. Thus, we actually should be adding data to the database, to a test database, that is, in this test, and then ensuring that the newly added data appears on the, on the DOM. And again, I will save this for a future video. So I think that just about covers it. Did I miss anything? If so, see if you can write a test for it, and then comment below with a link to the code. You can put the code in GIST, or even better, create an actual repository. So next time, I'll show you quickly how to deploy this app to Roku before we start to scale out building a production quality application. Thanks for watching.